What's up everybody, Gannon here, back again with another one of my Star Trek reviews. Today is September 8th as I am recording this, which means it is officially Star Trek Day. It is our May the 4th that is happening right now. So we're gonna get a live stream later, hopefully giving us a whole bunch of teasers and new information on the live action shows that are going to be getting new seasons. I am especially excited for Discovery and Picard, mostly just because Discovery has been on the back end. It hasn't gotten a lot of publicity and they haven't really been promoting it as much as they realize that Strange New Worlds is probably going to be their cash cow. Everybody unanimously loves it and it's going to probably get a lot of the attention and marketing budget from here on out. I really want to see if Discovery can bounce back after creating probably the worst season of Star Trek ever made. I really liked the first two and a half seasons of Discovery. Season three kind of had a shaky ending and there was only a handful of episodes that I even like slightly enjoyed in season four. Season four was a wreck. So I'm excited to see what kind of information, what kind of teaser they can get me hyped up for season five. Hopefully we can rebound and have a really strong season five. Also Picard is just going to be insane. It's going to be the Star Trek event of damn century. This is probably going to be the last time Sir Patrick Stewart ever plays the role of Jean-Luc Picard. So they're going to get out all the big guns. I just hope that this third season of Picard is a amazing because I was kind of a fan of the second season. I was slightly shilling it. It had some bumps and literally an episode and a half that were just completely useless and poor use of screen time, but season three I feel like is going to be a work of art. Yeah, Star Trek Day. Hopefully you guys are going to consume some Star Trek today in celebration. I got to consume some new Star Trek today in the form of Star Trek Lower Decks, and like I said before, Star Trek Lower Decks proves time and time again how this show is just following a formula and it does it well which is just what Star Trek has always been good at doing it finds like a pretty good formula and it keeps on doing it back to back week after week Star Trek Lower Decks is hilarious it gets goofier and sillier with every episode it does not harm or touch Star Trek primeline canon at all in fact it almost just supplements it in the nicest ways with the introduction of legacy characters or legacy ships in this instance in this new episode we get to see the legacy ship in the form of the USS Hood. So I am very much looking forward to talking about all of this. Let's get right into it. Season three, episode three. This episode is titled Mining the Mines Mines. This episode is about the Cerritos and crew going down to help clean up a planet that are home to this alien species that are like silicon based life forms known as the Scrubble. That is a really great name. I love the naming schemes that they've been doing lately with the aliens. In the last episode, we had that predatory alien named Cranch who I just thought was the funniest damn thing ever. The Scrubble have these little rocks on their planet that are just perfect spears and they grow glow bright green and they're known as fantasy orbs. If you come in contact with them physically, then you're going to have your wildest dreams just kind of come true. And then if you indulge in those dreams, kind of similar to how a siren works, you just get turned into stone, kind of like Medusa's curse. Really funny, I really like how Ransom makes a comment at the beginning of this episode about how outpost scientists are super strange and weird and how they're so unwilling to not join Starfleet. They always have to go and become weird mad scientists and go and explore space on their own in these outposts and these colonies and they're always up to no good which is like such a true theme for Star Trek in every episode ever if you're an outpost or colony and there are some scientists experimenting or terraforming there they're up to no good to some degree. Basically things have already been sorted here or so it seems the USS Hood the Excelsior class ship that showed up in the next generation which is actually really cool it has a new captain in the form of Captain Murakami he seems pretty tight. It's no longer Captain DeSoto commanding the hood. If you remember from the next generation, he showed up in the Tin Man episode on the view screen. And then also, I'm pretty sure he was referenced in the Pegasus when talking about Riker's old command because Riker served on that ship. I'm pretty sure as a first officer or like a really high ranking member of the ship. And then also Jordy served aboard that ship. Everything's chill now. They're basically sending the lower deckers down below to help clean up these fantasy 
orbs, Mariner, Rutherford, and Boimler, their story arc, they come in contact with the crew of the USS Carlsbad, led by Captain Mayer, who's a really young captain who's kind of beefing with Captain Freeman for the whole episode because they're arguing about who should accept the Scrubble Stone, like this special Scrubble Stone. They're constantly arguing back and forth about who should accept it, and you could see that there's kind of some competitiveness going on there. They're just kind of being like prideful captains, I guess. It's not like an overly super funny bit on the episode. I'm just kind of mentioning it here. Mariner, Boimler, and Rutherford are making an effort to get along with the ensigns and the lower deckers of the other California class ship, the Carlsbad. The only one who I really wanted to remember their names was uh, Ensign Kearns, mostly just because like I'm kind of a fucking pig. The first shot they have of her in the episode is like just showing off her butt and she's kind of got a dumpy. This episode was like weirdly hot. Also like is it strange about how much I kind of get aroused by cartoons sometimes? Like there was this dope scene basically when they actually had come in contact with the orbs and the orbs were trying to attempt to lure them in by producing their fantasies and there was a whole bunch of cool stuff that these fantasy orbs conjured. Thing Rutherford fantasizes about Leah Brahms which bro like I'm all here with you dude. That's so funny. It makes perfect sense that an engineer who's like super obsessed with electronics and engineering like Rutherford that he'd be like so into Leia Brahms. Leia Brahms is fine as hell so like I totally get that dude. Mariner actually dreamt up Jennifer the Andorian who has been you know highly alluded that they're totally like in a relationship to some degree and now in this episode it's just confirmed that they are definitely Mariner is super gay. Star Trek is super gay. It just needs to keep on getting gayer, to be honest, because in my opinion, it only makes sense. Humans are only going to get more gay. Our sexualities are only going to get more expressive. And by the time the 24th century comes around, I wouldn't be surprised if over half the ship of the Cerritos is like a little bit queer to some degree. The lower deckers from the Carlsbad are kind of making Mariner and them feel bad because they're implying that the USS Cerritos has a bad reputation that they just kind of want to be focused and do their work. They don't even want to talk to or interact with Mariner and them because it's alluded that they're such troublemakers and that they're not responsible. But we learn later in the episode that this was just a whole facade and that they the whole time were doing their work so well because they were trying to impress Mariner and them because apparently Mariner and the Lower Deckers are famous and they're actually the most famous California class ship and among the other California class ships, these dopey little funny ships, Mariner and the crew are actually kind of infamous, which is cool. Really actually cool to know that some of their deeds have been talked about and rumored on other ships. Commander Stevens gets egged on by Mariner because she says that the other Lower Deckers are talking about, about Commander Ransom, who Lieutenant Commander Stevens has a boy crush on. Lieutenant Commander Stevens gets really eager to carry around some fantasy orbs and gets the job done, but then cracks them open, which means that like the fantasy juice is now super potent and all in the air and everybody's totally just sniffing that up at this point. Every part of their thoughts, like their nightmares, so it produces some Klingon clowns that have Batleth, uh, Edward Scissorhands, arms, which is really funny. Also, Kukulkin, which is like an Aztec odd, and the only reason I know about that is because he's a super overpowered and easy character to play in Smite. And yeah, like I said before, they kind of spawn Jennifer in a bikini and it arouses the hell out of me. I love alien women. I think that that is like my number one kink and it is totally Star Trek's fault. Uh, it's definitely aliens. Like I am way too willing to, to have intercourse with an alien. I'm a little bit almost ashamed to admit. But haven't they already done this before? Hasn't there already been an episode where their minds were altered and they were hallucinating and then Mariner kind of just like saw Jennifer in a little... Pretty sure she was like making out with another crewmate, the bridge officer, the trill one. Oh, and... Let me not forget the Borg snake. There was a giant Borg snake. That was great to see. The other thing that's going on in this episode is that Tendi is conducting her science senior officer training and then the person who is unfortunately helping her out with that is the ship's counselor, Dr. Miglimo, which is the avian therapist aboard the Cerritos that has kind of 
and unspecified species. This dude's hilarious. I really liked him in this episode. The way he was talking to Tendi, his dialogue was just great and it was well written and it had me thinking the whole time. You know how in uh, the next gen on that one episode, everything goes like super wrong on the ship. I'm pretty sure it's called Disaster. Counselor Troy was the only senior officer left on the bridge and she like technically held the rank of commander. Would that be the same thing with Dr. Migley Moo? Like imagine if a disaster happened on the Cerritos and it was just the lower deckers and Dr. Migley Moo up on the bridge. That would be such a funny episode and technically they would have to take orders from this like dopey green bird. I, I think that's like a actually a really good episode idea and lower decks you should do that 100%. Dr. Migley Moo just basically tells Tendi do any of the typical training doesn't want her to take a test but instead wants her to go up to the main negotiation room where Captain Mayer, Captain Freeman and the Scrubble are. She is trying to get Captain Freeman's attention trying to interject and trying to enter the conversation with some commanding presence. So yeah I really like all this essentially. The only part of this episode that feels like a little bit shallow and uninteresting to me is the constant back and forth quarrel between Mayor and Captain Freeman. It's just like not that funny. I don't know if I should like care about Captain Mayor at all. At the end of the episode, they find out that the Scrubble are actually colluding with the Outpost 76 scientists to, I don't know, like do whatever. I don't even know what they're trying to do. All they, they disclose is that they have Federation technology there and that they're working together to collect information from people's minds but I don't know why it's beneficial to anybody to just turn people into stone. Like, I don't get that. I don't even remember if they explain it. Maybe they don't. This is just like a Rick and Morty cartoon. It doesn't matter. Tendi enters the briefing room and then, sh like, breaks the funny scrubble stone to reveal that there's actually, like, a transmitter inside of it that would have collected information about important stuff from the captains. The scrubble were actually kind of a little bit guilty the whole time. They're escorted out of the briefing room by none other than Lieutenant Lieutenant K. Sean, and I made a comment about him last episode. I'm like, where is he? You know, now that Shax is back, is Lieutenant K. Sean now irrelevant? You know, brings up a point that I would like to add. There's actually a lot of stuff that happens in the background, and there's a lot of reoccurring background characters in Lower Decks that I haven't been paying enough attention to. It's really cool. Like, you can see characters slowly pop in and out, and sometimes they'll even get like a promotion or an extra pip or something about them will change. So that's actually really cool that Lower Decks does that. It's pretty amazing immersive and it just like adds some fine details that you got to give them brownie points for. That's pretty much my review. Loving it, of course, but I need some live action Star Trek in my life. Like this 22 minutes, just this little taste of the Star Trek universe is all good and great, but it's got me fiending. Like it's just not enough. I need a 50 minute, really well written episode of Star Trek with some of my favorite characters. I just need it so bad. But with all that being said, I think I gave the last episode like a five point five. I want to go back up and just give this one like a six, six and a half. We're probably going to stay around this range for Lower Decks because Lower Decks is just consistent like that. I'm waiting for an episode with a crazy cameo and really good writing to come so that I could give it like a higher score. And it's going to pop the hell off. But for now, this episode is probably my favorite so far in the season, just like comedy wise Easter eggs. And then also just like, I really liked Dr. Migley Moo. This episode, I'd like to see him more. He's just a really goofy character. I like the green bird design they got going on there. Hope you guys have a good Star Trek day. I hope you guys watch some Star Trek today and really enjoy it. And I hope that we get some good information and teasers on the new stuff that is about to come out. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you're enjoying any of the content that you see on my channel, I'd be very flattered if you were to subscribe. Once we reach 10K subscribers, I am going to dress up like a Star Trek Xenos and film myself doing some cool stuff in public. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment down below. I love comments. They're my favorite thing about YouTube and I read every single one. Join my Discord for discourse on any of the topics that we discuss here on the channel. And with all that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your week and Star Trek day. Live long and prosper. Great.